Hello, my name is Orestes Matos. I am a technical solutions architect on the campus automation team. In this video, I will cover DNA Center 223 updates for Endpoint Analytics or EA. Before we cover these updates, I first would like to explain why EA is important and the value that it brings to you, our customers. Due to the ever increasing security threats, many organizations are realizing that it is important to understand the endpoints that connect into their environments. This is true now more than ever as devices that traditionally were never on an IP network are now being onboarded. This is also known as the Internet of Things or IoT. The expectation is that all devices on the network can be accounted for. Having this clear understanding can also allow for the proper segmentation of the network, allowing for an additional layer of security. By having segmentation, it can help minimize the lateral movement of bad actors or the spread of a botnet from a compromised device. However, the reality is that many organizations cannot account for many devices due to the vast number of devices that are connected. This is the problem that EA is solving for. By leveraging the investment in the Catalyst 9000 switches and 9800 wireless controllers, AI Endpoint Analytics works by analyzing telemetry data that is collected using deep packet inspection. This capability can be automated using the NA Center. Optionally, for legacy networks, a telemetry appliance can also be used to receive SPAN, RSPAN, or ERSPAN traffic. EA also uses AI and ML to group endpoints using different methods such as crowdsourcing. EA can group endpoints by the following profile labels, endpoint type, OS type, hardware model, hardware manufacturer. EA will classify traditional endpoints such as workstations, but more importantly, it can also identify IoT devices. Again, this, is, this identification of endpoints will help your segmentation strategy. ICE and DNA Center establish a relationship using PX Grid. As a result, within the EA dashboard, you can manage potential risk by applying adaptive network control or ANC policies. As of ICE 3.1, EA can also pass the trust score, CMDB, and multi-factor profiling attributes. These attributes can be used as conditions when building authorization policies in ICE. In order to get started with EA, I have included a list of minimum requirements. So now let's go to the demo. In this demo, I will cover AI Endpoint Analytics in DNA Center 223. Before we can get started with Endpoint Analytics, we want to make sure we go and turn on the CBAR capability that DNA Center can help with provisioning. This capability will allow the deep packet inspection to be turned on on the network devices such as 9300s and 9800 wireless controllers. Once this capability has been enabled, we can go over to the uh, DNA Center Endpoint Analytics. Now, in order to get to this part of DNA Center, you would go into the hamburger menu, select Policy, AI Endpoint Analytics. This dashboard provides a view of all the endpoints that have been discovered. In this case, we see that there are fully profiled, partially profiled, and unknown endpoints. These profiles are based on profile labels such as endpoint type, hardware manufacturer, hardware model, and OS type. In addition, we have a trust score this trust score comes in to DNA Center based on the devices authenticating with ICE. And based on that authentication, they will be assessed a trust score. In addition, there's AI proposals, which will allow with, uh, which will work with AI and ML in terms of crowdsourcing for additional profile labeling. Last, here we have endpoint MAC randomization, 
where we can keep track of randomized MAC addresses. Now we can either go to Manage Sources or Configuration and we can take a look at additional configuration properties. Here we have Profile Rule Settings which allow for automated updates of the profile rules. Those could be daily or weekly. Uh, the next step is ICE integration. So this integration allows for additional attributes to be passed on to ICE via PXGrid. We have IoT asset attributes as well as enhanced authorization integration, which allows for the ability to uh, pass trust score, CMDB attributes, multi-factor profiling attributes to ICE for additional authorization policies within ICE. This does, however, require ICE 3.1. In this next section, trust score sources, as you know, I mentioned earlier that the trust score is assigned to endpoints based on authentication as well as posture details. Now, if there is any sort of anomalous behavior detected, a DNA Center will change the trust score. These trust score sources are AI spoofing detection, profile label change, NAT mode detection, concurrent MAC address, posture compliance, as well as authentication method. The next section is endpoint purge policy. What will happen here is that you can create a policy that uh, will remove any endpoints within the database. So you can do this from a uh, holistic level, all endpoints, as well as create a policy for randomized MAC addresses only. The next section is endpoint subnet inspection. If you are using a telemetry appliance, this can help with any uh, optimization in terms of what subnets need to be uh, used or identified for optimal telemetry uh, deep packet inspection analysis. The next section is endpoint inventory. And here you could see that the information has already been sorted based on the profile labels as well as trust score. Now, this information here is one view in terms of how we've identified these endpoints. Now, you could see that it's on these four labels and point type. Now, these four labels would actually affect whether a device is fully profiled or partially profiled. In this new view, you see that everything has been sorted via the trust score. And we can look at the trust score sources, such as AI spoofing detection, etc. I'd like to focus now on one particular device that has a low score. Now you could see the endpoint details, such as IP phone, um, hardware manufacturer, etc. Now what we'd like to focus on is that trust score. The trust score here has been reduced based on the anomalous detection of AI spoofing detection, which uh, has identified several applications um, or anomalous applications running as a part of that endpoint. The other uh, source of detection has been the concurrent MAC address, which has identified this MAC address in two different switch ports in the network. If there is any action that's needed, um, you can activate the ANC policy or adaptive network control policy to help quarantine this device as well as re-authenticate or even shut the port down. I hope now that you have seen this demo, you better understand how Endpoint analytics can help identify endpoints as well as help create or enhance the authorization policies within ICE. Thank you.